Good morning. Welcome to the knowledge session. I'm going to talk about a subject which is possibly burning a lot of people's heart as well as a lot of people's pockets. Okay? This is the stress in the business due to various reasons that cause these issues, which is fair. Okay? Let's look at it. Next. Okay? The key challenges faced by, I have used the word SME, but it's as well applicable to even bigger ones. There's no issue on that. You see, the SMEs don't tend to innovate. It's very critical that to survive these days, we need to innovate, okay? And there are plenty of opportunities that come through. And we don't look at the profitabilities. We don't look at the profitabilities as an opportunity. The opportunities provide you the profitability and opportunities provide you the growth. The opportunities provide you the chances for scaling. Okay? Finding opportunities is the challenge today. Next. Okay. There are about seven challenges we listed in the board. The first and foremost is the management of cash. Why do companies run out of cash midway in their life? Very simple reasons but quite common sense. We start a business with very inadequate initial capital. The initial capital gets spent on setting up your offices, setting up your shops, etc. Hardly any money left for your working capital. Without working capital, there is no business. That's why the word working capital is designed. If you want to work, you need the capital. And if you want the capital, you need to be working. Right? So the main reason is the inadequate this one. The second reason for in the cash stress or what you call cash strain is not caring for how much you are spending on a monthly basis versus what you are generating. This is what they call cash burn. If you don't, the investors, the promoters, the owners do not mind the cash burn rate, they will end up very soon into the cash crunch. The third and the most important thing is, can somebody guess what is the third and the most important thing? Your revenue streams are not strong enough. You need to maintain a business, you need to maintain the revenue stream. Don't look at accounting, don't look at anything else. You need to have a revenue stream. Day in and day after, you should be in a position to collect money which comes from your sales, say, coming from your sales, which are good sales. Don't know, I'm not talking about um, sales to dubious and other situations, but good quality sales get you the cash. So you are in a position to keep generating cash as you go along. There are other key factors which I would call propellers of your business. The propellers of your business are Basically, the processes, systems, as well as data-driven approach. Okay? Yeah. All of you know that a vessel in this space goes through propeller system, which propels the spaceships at various levels, at various speeds, and take you into different trajectory. That is still applicable to the business. If you do not have the propellers working for you, you will not be able to grow scale and become profitable. What are the propellers? propellers? Basically your systems approach. You can't be everywhere in the business. If you have an all India business, how many places you will visit? You can't. So you need to have a systems driven approach to manage your business. The second is your processes. How do you deliver a goods to the customer? How do you keep the customer happy? How do you deal with the customer returns? How do you deal with the customer complaints? These are all simple processes, but needed to be adequately paid attention to so that the businesses can grow. What are the biggest strengths of Amazon? Customer care, customer returns, the way you treat the, the, the way they treat the customer. I'm not talking of the local resellers who are a different breed in this country, but if you look at international model, Amazon has got a fantastic CRM system. Customer relationship management is fabulous in Amazon. 
possibly next only to Walmart. How many of you have gone to Walmart stores? There are people flocking on you saying that, how can I help you? What do you need? Can I help you? Can I go and fetch it? This is the price. You know, the type of uh, responses they come up with the customer is fabulous. See, that's why you need a process-driven systems. However small you are, however big you are, it is the material. You need it to be process-driven. Thirdly, data. Because most of us read a table as a set of numbers. There are data analysts who will tell you what is happening behind the table. That's what the crucial information that is converting data into manageable or decision-making tools is your the analysis. So the, not only is it important to have data in form of tables, which your accountants will always provide, but the interpretative power has got to be built. That's what we call as data-driven businesses. It is not data accumulation, it is not data compiling. It is data-driven. That means you understand what goes behind the numbers. What is it? Why is this customer buying the same thing again and again? Why is the customer talking about the same thing again and again? Right? Here the customer has a preference, customer has a choice. Are we tuned to it? Are we using that information that this set of customers prefer to have certain type of things? That's very critical. So you need to be data driven. I would call these three as the three key propellants of your growth, of your scaling, and of your profitability. Okay? There are others are on the screen which are rather simple and possibly may not immediately apply to a lot of SMEs because they are really high staff, like managing aspirations of people. Most of the SMEs don't have too many people. So these issues would definitely be posed by the individuals or the companies, but not immediately. Immediate issues are management of cash and management of the four propellants which will take you to the business. Okay. I can share some of the examples I had or experiences I had. Can you go to the next slide, please? We worked with a company called Nasik Engineering Cluster. It was a dull, drab organization without any focus on anything. We virtually converted into, a, here is a case of a data-driven company. Uh, completely converted into a data-driven organization which we turned profitable and now it is possibly one of the leading uh, engineering clusters in the country. Quite profitable, quite knowledgeable, and quite up to date on technology. They talk about IOTs and for the scale four engineering skills. That is the type of institution it has become. The second one is Rishab Engineering in Nasik. It's again structuring, how do you structure your sales and marketing? How do you get your collaborators to buy your stuff without your having to pay for it? How do you uh, generate income through connections? This is the Rishabh survey, our experience with the Rishabh. And finally, the last one. Next one, please. This is the Fred tools. They're very similar to the, uh, the second one. Again, uh, turned around with a different set of things. Here, of course, I can share the details later in a private basis. This is where we learned how to run a business virtually without working capital. Excuse me? Yes, virtually we worked with zero working capital. It's manageable. It's difficult, but it's manageable. We have done it before. We could, I could talk about it in a private session. There will be another uh, forum where we can talk about it. But I will definitely share some insight into the chapter. Next. Okay. What do we do and how do we do? We simply do an analysis in depth to understand the gaps which the organization is going through. That's what I have said. What are the routes to return to profitable ways of doing a business? Okay. This emphasis is on profitable and not really on sales. I need to generate the profits because profits is virtually the cash at this point of time. Okay? Then we have what we call the famous KKR model of restructuring, which is talking about yeah, innovative financing, focus on matrices which are material for the business, okay? and then we have incentives 
very well structured incentives to keep the people glued to the company. Without people, there's no company. One promoter or one owner cannot run a business and he cannot grow, he cannot scale. And nobody would invest in a business of that because one person is dependent on one person. So the any one person models don't really work very well. So we need to keep people. For that, you need to incentivize them. Incentivize them in terms of financially, career-wise, and aspirations-wise. And finally, we do the active and constant monitoring. This model is very elaborate. I just put in the four major bullets, but this is what the KKR does it. KKR is Coilberg, Cravis, and Robert, which is a M&A firm, who is known for taking over sick companies. Nabisco was turned by them under this model. So they have done about 27 turn turnarounds, put them back into the alternative exchanges, and all the companies are public today. Next. Next, next, please. Okay? Now, those of you who want to have any questions, please feel free to ask me, or we can talk offline.